G'day there guys, the Karen Destroyer himself, Marky here, back at it again with another episode of r slash Entitled Parents. Now if you love today's content, I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn on the barbecue, a like on the video, and tell me what you think of today's amazing episode. Posted by user Bluebat55, titled, Woman Keys Car Cause It's Too Loud. So for some background, the car wasn't mine. It was my brother-in-law's. He's suing her for about 60 grand for the damages. I don't know the exact car model, but it's a muscle car and it's manual. Our characters are me, brother-in-law, sis, Karen, mum, P1, P2. So it all started when I decided I wanted to start learning stick. Since my brother-in-law is the only person I know with a manual car, I had him come over and teach me. When the car starts up, it does make a rather loud rev. We made sure to do it in the afternoon as to not wake people up and try to be considerate. Anyways, it was about the third or fourth day of him teaching me when she first appeared. Karen says, Nice car. Bit too loud for my taste, but it's still nice. Oh, uh, thanks. Mind trying to keep it down a bit? My baby doesn't really seem to like it that much. Yeah, sure. We've been driving in the day so it doesn't wake people up. I didn't know anyone around here had a baby, so I'm sorry about that. It's not a problem. Just be quiet, okay? And with that condescending tone and smile on her face, she walked off. Which kind of made me mad because I just thought it was a friendly chat. It wouldn't be the first time people had talked about my brother-in-law's car, thinking it's mine. I've grown to accept that people will think whatever, so I play along and just tell brother-in-law about it. Two days go by with no sign of her. I wake up, get ready, and wait for brother-in-law to come over so we can start my lesson. I walk outside, and lo and behold, she was there. She says, I thought I told you to keep it down. Sorry, I can't control it. It's just how the car starts, and we're not going to leave it running while we're not in it. That's just a waste of gas. I don't care. Stop being loud. With that, she was gone. It always annoys me when people complain about cars being loud. A car is a motor vehicle with a combustion engine in it. Of course it's going to make noise. Brother-in-law got to my place and off we went. We came back to my house to eat lunch. About two or so hours later, my sister and my mum come over and tell brother-in-law and I to go look at the car. The entire driver's side was scratched up and even a tyre was popped. Only one person came to mind when I saw it. Karen. We meaning me and my brother-in-law, walked down to her house, which was only a few houses down, and knocked on her door. All we hear coming from the other side is, I'm not apologizing. So this led brother-in-law to say, then you better have a good case in court, you bee. That's gonna cost a lot to fix, and I'm suing you for every fun cent. Maybe keep it down then, you hick. Maybe don't go keying cars and popping tires, and you won't get sued, you bimbo. This went on for about 20 minutes. We head back, call the police, and get everything ready for what was about to come. As soon as they got there, we started to explain what happened. How I was learning stick, how the car was, showed them the damages, told them what the Karen said, etc. We were making sure our side was accurate, so we made sure our timeline was correct. After a while, we walked with the police to her house, and it went down about as well as you'd expect. Police 1 says, Excuse me, ma'am, can you come out here for a minute? This is the PD wanting to speak to you about your car. I'm not apologizing. I told them to keep it down and they didn't. They deserve it. Ma'am, what you did was against the law and they are pressing charges. You have five minutes to get out here or we will get a warrant for your arrest and come back. Nice try, but I'm not stupid. I know my rights and you're not allowed to enter my home without my consent or a search warrant. That's only partially true. We can't search your home without a warrant. However, if we have a warrant for your arrest, we can legally enter your home and place you into custody. She was stubborn. Again, they went back and forth for a bit. After the allotted time set, we went back to my house. The cops left to get a warrant and we waited. Currently, the lawsuit is in order and the trial is in a few days. She is in police custody, and I have never found it easier to drive a stick shift knowing I won't have to deal with her condescending ways and tones. 
Posted by user Fireball99k, titled, Entitled Mother and His Bratty Kid Accomplished the Task of Hurting, Humiliating, and Almost Getting Me Arrested Over a Nintendo DS. I was talking with my friend about this experience, and he told me to post it here, so enjoy my experience about me and this unbelievable Karen. First of all, I need to say that English isn't my first language, so there might be some grammatical errors. Forgive me about it. This took place last year in the end of summer, while I was waiting for my flight in the airport after a vacation with my family in Italy. The airport was pretty empty that day, despite that it was supposed to be trafficked due to the big amount of people coming back from vacations. Anyway, I was playing with my Nintendo to kill time since my flight was late, and I wanted to preserve my phone battery. I forgot the power bank at home. So me, 20, was quietly playing when this woman who looked like 40 or younger, and his son, probably 10 judging by height, placed in front of me and started complaining about the flights being late and that she had business, etc, etc. I stopped listening to her because I put on my headphones in an attempt to escape her complaining about this and that. I can't stand listening to complaining that doesn't concern me. Time passes, and a notice comes out from the speakers, saying that my flight was going to be delayed again. Sighing, I put back on my earphones, and that's the moment where the show starts. Entitled Mother comes at me with his kid and asks me something. I remove my earphones, and the conversation goes like this. Excuse me? Yes? Do you need something, ma'am? Yes, please. You see, my kid, Entitled Kid is getting very bored here, so I wondered if you could borrow him your video game to let him relax until our flight arrives. Nothing wrong till here, but you see, I don't trust random kids, since every time I borrowed something to them, insert borrowed item, returned to me scratched, smudged, or even broken. So it was a no, I'm sorry, for the little brat. The moment I said no, things started escalating. The tone of the woman changed from polite to arrogant, and the volume had rose, and the kid who was giving me puppy eyes started to give me stink eyes. But why? You're not a kid anymore. You look like 25 or something and you still play video games? Why don't you give that toy to my son so he can kill some time? You don't need it this much. To be honest, if the kid would have promised to use it near me, and returning it to me intact, I could have given up and let him play because he was a kid after all. I know that they become nervous if they don't have anything to do for a while, but the very moment Entitled Mother started speaking arrogantly, she lost every hope with me. I say, listen ma'am, I don't borrow my stuff to strangers for a matter of principle, so even if you were some famous person, my answer would still be no. Plus, I recommend you lower your voice because people are watching us. I didn't really check if people were watching us, but it was clear by listening to the volume of her voice that anyone would have looked towards us. She says, well, raising her voice, I don't care if people are watching us. Even better, because this way everyone will know how much selfish and childish you are, not borrowing a stupid video game to a kid. The conversation was getting out of hand. I could feel the glares of the strangers in the airport looking at me, thinking I'm some sort of monster. And instead of saying anything that could worsen the situation, I decided to keep calm and go on. I said, ma'am, the only one acting childish here is you. Lower your voice before someone calls the security on you. The security will be called on you for being an absolute a-hole, and when they will arrive, I will have that stupid video game of yours confiscated, you little crap. I was starting to lose my patience, and I quietly say, almost grinding my teeth and still not moving from my seat, this conversation is over. Please leave, and don't show your face near me again for your sake. I know that sounded like a threat, but the reaction was as cringe as hilarious. Are you threatening me? Oh, you are so screwed up. I'm going to report you for threats. I thought the conversation was going to end, and that she was going to complain to the manager or something, typical things that Karens do. It was the first time for me dealing with this type of person. Everything could be fine as long as she leaves me alone, but the real hell starts now. While I was putting my earphones back, the woman snatched them from me, and while I was going to say something, the little turd did something that changed forever my views about kids. 
In short, he came closer and spit in my shirt. I started seeing red. You little crap, I say while trying to move away the brat with my leg, not trying to kick him or anything. Entitled mother screaming like crazy, Don't you dare hurt my son! After that sentence, she tries to slap me, but I grab her by her arm promptly before her hand reaches my face. If she had succeeded in slapping me, I swear I would have done something that I would have regret for years to come. She starts screaming and asking for help, even screeching that I was molesting her, and someone starts moving in our way in an attempt to stop the tumult. But that wasn't necessary because the little excuse for a human child does something I didn't even think kids were capable of, in terms of malignancy. He punched me in the nuts. That little crap with legs and arms was so malefic to punch a grown-up in the nuts. That kid was fully aware of the weak point of a male, yet he did it. Unbelievable. The pain does little except fueling the rage that was boiling in me. I must say, I am a very patient person and all, but when I lose my crap, I don't have any self-control. So it always ends up bad, and that was going to end up very bad for both me and they. I stand up from the chair and push away the woman, which starts a demonstration with her and her son of their impressive acting skill. She rolls on the floor, screaming, and the little turd has the courage to fake a cry while several people were getting close. I was confused, enraged, and shocked. I never dealt with someone who could be so malefic and shameless. I was literally speechless and frozen in place with my fists closed, in pain for the punch received in my sack. While standing still looking at the pathetic show she was giving, I feel someone grabbing my hands and handcuffing them. It was the security guard, who clearly misunderstood and judged by the last scenes. He then escorted me to a white room with nothing but a table and started asking me questions after I calmed down. Everything I answered to those questions was, check the camera registration and you'll see. I was frustrated and angered that I didn't want to say anything at all. But I was thankful at the guard too for removing me from that place before I could get my hands on that woman. Something like 20 minutes passes, and the guards come back and they hand me a bottle of water. He was an understanding person after all, luckily. The guard says, you can go, and forgive me for the cuffs. Your suitcases are in the other room. Would you like to press charges for aggression? I didn't want that tramp's money, and just wanted to go back home without further complications. So I refused, but I had to take a final satisfaction before taking my flight. The speakers announced that my flight was ready, so before I go, I reach out to Karen and her son, who was standing in the seat I was earlier quietly sitting in like nothing happened. I touch her kid on the shoulder and say, I think this belongs to you. You need it more than me, I say, bringing out the Nintendo. The moment I bring out the console, the little turd's eyes became like cat eyes when they are in the dark, and the mother's grinning in satisfaction as she thinks she obtained what she wanted. Hell no. Little did she know, before handing it to him, I snap it into two pieces, and I get a taste of their shocked faces. I dump the broken console on the legs of the little brat as I take my leave, hearing pointless talks in my back. It was the worst experience of my life, and made me discover that kids can be devils too, and I couldn't end giving the win to that pathetic woman and her show. Single mothers who think everyone must get the world upside down just because they say it. When I think about it, I get overwhelmed with anger and disappointment, but then I think about the sweet revenge. I still can't believe it, and when I read that there are other similar people, my feelings goes to whoever has to deal with these pieces of crap. P.S. For those wondering if breaking the console was worth it, yes. It was very old anyway, and all the saved data was on the R4, so I had no problem in breaking it. Posted by user Bonnie Pants, titled Entitled Mother Demanded My Plane Seat on My Redeployment from Iraq. This happened in 2006. I was in the US Air Force and deployed individually to Iraq, not with a unit. At the end of my rotation, I also took the rotator back by myself. It was a commercial 747 the military paid to take a bunch of us to the US. Back then, we typically wear our uniforms, even on commercial flights. 
The guy in the seat next to me was similarly redeploying and also in his uniform. This was usually never a problem because Americans were typically very kind to servicemen in their uniforms in public. I can't say how it is now because that was a long time ago. We had a layover in Ramstein, Germany, and civilians began boarding. These were mostly wives, children, and other dependents of those deployed to Europe. It had to be obvious those of us already on the plane were coming back from deployment. We were in desert patterned camo, glassy-eyed from the mental and physical fatigue, and generally stunk of burn pits. Well, this woman with a baby comes right up to my seat and announces that we are in her seats. The other guy needs to move too because she wants to put her kid there. We were both kind of bleary and just stared at her in surprise. I didn't care where I sat, but the stewardess hurries over and says the flight is full and they can't reseat us. The woman shoves her ticket in the stewardess's face and says it clearly shows my seat number on her ticket. She wants to kick me and my seatmate off the flight. Clearly, she was more entitled to it than us. She flips her crap right in the middle of the plane and goes off on the stewardess. I stayed seated more out of shock than stubbornness. I had been awake for longer than I cared to think about by that point, and I was not reacting quickly to anything. I guess my seatmate was in the same boat, because neither of us said a single word to her or moved a muscle at all. We just watched her make an ass of herself in front of all of these gawking passengers. She ended up getting herself kicked off the flight. All in all, it happened rather quickly, but it still stunned me. The trip from Iraq to my home station was already going to be several days long, and she thought nothing of forcing me and the other guy off just for her convenience. I don't know why she popped into my head today, but I can't imagine being married to that. Posted by user Rex Calibur, titled, Entitled Mom Can't Accept That Her Three-Year-Old Child Isn't a Prodigy. Hey uh, last week I started a job as a teacher. Perfect ground for finding entitled parents. Here's some background to start off with. I teach English to children, and while the school accepts children between 18 months and 12 years, my students are between the ages of 2 and 5. The school I work at only teaches English and has different levels based on your child's ability, where the teacher can use discretion to decide if the child can go faster or needs to slow down. Because of the pandemic, the school also has mostly one-on-one -on -one lessons now. But because things are getting better where I am, the school also allows physical classes instead of online-only classes. I have this kid. We'll call him D. He's a three-year-old boy with a local Chinese father and a mother who is traditionally Chinese. Where I live, English is the primary language of most people, though the command of English is a little skewed with a plenty of slang. Dee's father could speak in Mandarin to his wife, our entitled mother. Entitled mother, however, could not speak any English at all and was Mandarin speaking only. This is where our problem number one is. While I am local Chinese, I only grew up with English-speaking parents and grandparents, which meant I have almost no command of Mandarin, even though I studied it as a second language for 12 years. Once I was out of school, my brain wrung out any knowledge of Mandarin like water out of a sponge. I can speak it at a barely conversational level, but can't explain anything in depth. The second lesson D came for was also my first day working there. While I was briefed on Entitled Mother, as she had been the one to sign Dee up for lessons, I was informed by my co-workers that Dee's father would be the one dropping him off and picking him up. This was good news for me, because when we let the child go at the end of the lesson, we take a few minutes to go through things with the parents and guardians on what the child learned, what they did well, and what they can improve on, along with any recommendations for them like speeding up or slowing down. It's hard for me to explain any of that in Mandarin, so if Dee's father was the one coming to pick him up, then talking to him was simple. Unfortunately for me, that was absolutely not the case. On Dee's first lesson with me, Entitled Mother was the one to drop him off. He's only three years old, so we were doing a foundation class with him, where we basically teach him one letter per hour-long class, how to say and write it, what sound the letter makes, and some simple words that start with said letter. Given that this was his first time seeing me, 
He was almost entirely unresponsive to anything that I said. He kept trying to go out and find Entitled Mother, would want me to open the door, and when I wouldn't, because he couldn't just be running off, he would try to shove his fingers in the gap in the door. He would not repeat after me or mimic my actions, and overall did not manage to learn much. I did manage to get him to say the four words that started with the letter B, but that was about all we managed to do in that hour. For all my Southeast Asian people out there, you know how our parents can be. You also know traditional Chinese parents are even worse, and Entitled Mother was just horrid. When I let D out to go back to Entitled Mother, she was at first cordial, asking how he did in the class and what he learned. I explained to her that because this was D's first lesson with me, he wasn't as responsive, but that he did manage to say the four B words taught to him. Now, during classes, we have four flashcards with the words they're supposed to learn, and we give these cards to the parents to keep in case they want to revise with their child at home. I prefer to give the cards to the kids to hold, to reinforce that it's their responsibility to keep the cards safe. Plus, it helps them develop their motor skills when they have to hold stuff. When I gave D his flashcards, Entitled Mother snatched it out of his hand and immediately pointed to the first one, Bubbles, demanding loudly for him to say the word. Since D was no longer in an environment where it was just me and him, he clammed up and wouldn't say anything. Entitled Mother saw that as my failure. Cue our first terrible conversation. You already know who Entitled Mother and D are, and me is... Ugh, I don't need to explain that. <laughs> this conversation was in Mandarin, with me speaking in broken Mandarin. As a side note, I can understand Mandarin, but can't speak it. Another side note, parents aren't allowed to be in the classroom during lesson time. Entitled Mother says, What does this card say? D says nothing. Entitled Mother jabbing her finger into the card says, What does it say? When D doesn't respond, I get a death glare from Entitled Mother. Why doesn't he know how to say it? What do I pay you for? Ma'am, since this was his first lesson with me, I think he was shy and we didn't manage to get far in the material today. I assure you that, what do I pay you for? I sent him here so he could learn English. Entitled Mother glares at D and demands that he say bubbles again. But D is entirely clammed up and just shakes his head. Look, ma'am, you need to understand that this was his first time seeing me, and he's three years old. He was able to copy what I said during class and point at the pictures associated with words. Then why can't he say it? D, tell me what this card says. I say, possibly because we're no longer in a quiet environment where it's just him with the teacher. He should warm up to me soon within the next class or two and become more receptive to the lessons. I'm sorry if the class today wasn't up to your standards, but please understand it is his first time with me. Entitled Mother snorts at my comments, grabs D and stalks off. I share some words with my co-workers, mostly us tramping about Entitled Mother, and my mentor confirming that she was just like that during D's first lesson at the school with her. That concluded my first time meeting Entitled Mother. But oh no, we're not quite done. Now it's time for today's lesson. She was even more horrible this time. She showed up 10 minutes late, thankfully with Dee's father too, and released Dee into my care. Today, I taught him the letter C, including the words car, cat, cow, and crab. He was a lot more receptive now that I figured out that he was more into physical actions and was able to say all four words, plus match the words with the pictures. The class itself was fun, but releasing him to his parents was not. Since Dee's dad was around, I spoke to him almost exclusively. I explained to him that Dee was doing well and became a lot more receptive to me and my lessons, but struggled with his penmanship since he couldn't get a good grip on a crayon and had a very light touch so his movements were shaky. I also explained that he struggled to say car sometimes, since he mixed up how it sounded with cow. But Dee's dad was very understanding. I recommended he guide Dee in how to properly hold a pencil at home, and Dee's dad relayed all this in Mandarin to Entitled Mother. Entitled Mother looked ticked at me when Dee's dad mentioned to her my comments about Dee not being able to hold a crayon properly, but said nothing. The school also gives the child the activity book to bring home, 
and Dee's book today had a page with a card drawing that you cut out. My co-worker had cut out the entire page so she could cut out the car itself with ease, and the car was coloured in by Dee. Entitled Mother only noticed the bit of the page that was still in the book and blew her fuse, saying, Where is this page? How can you give him such a terrible book, huh? Where's the page? Why did you give my son something so terribly made? Ma'am, that page was cut out because there's a paper car cut out we needed to use. Here, the car is right here. I flipped the book over to the front page, where Dee's messily coloured car cutout was tucked between the cover and the first page. Entitled Mother's rage subsided a little, but she gave me the nastiest death glare. Oh, so he couldn't even colour it properly? Hmm, I wonder why I'm even paying you when you can't teach Dee how to colour a picture. Let me say, teaching children how to hold a pencil is not my job. It's the parent's duty, and if they only expect him to practice for an hour every Saturday, that's their problem. Sounds nasty, but it's true. At this point, I'm exclusively speaking to Dee's dad, and barely even looking at Entitled Mother. Entitled Mother has also gone back to jabbing her finger at the flashcards, demanding that Dee say what the words are. Entitled Mother shaking the car flashcard in Dee's face says, Say it! Say what this word is! D is visibly stressed, clutching his toy car and staring at Entitled Mother, but saying nothing. I decided to intervene. I, pointing at D's car in his hand, say, D, do you know what that is? D immediately flashes me a big grin. Car! I clap for him and give him a high five, offering Entitled Mother a smile that only makes her scowl deeper. Pretty sure her muzzle lines and crow feet are permanent now. I also notice that any time Entitled Mother talks, Dee's dad looks at her with such tiredness in his eyes, like he's regretting his marriage now. I finish explaining to Dee's dad on my recommendations for him to practice his penmanship at home. He thanks me, while Entitled Mother grabs Dee's wrist and yanks him off, stalking off like she's some femme fatale. The school admin apologises to me for even convincing Entitled Mum to sign Dee up, saying that he knew she was going to be trouble during the sign-up process. I just say it's fine, pack up, and leave. Now three hours later, I'm sitting here writing this, thinking if Entitled Mother keeps her trash behaviour up, she's going to grow up with a son that hates her. Can't believe I have to see Entitled Mother every Saturday now. I hope she pulls Dee out, even though I love him dearly. Entitled Mother is just going to keep making trouble every single week and find some reason to throw a crap storm. Sorry this got so long, and thanks for reading. Being a teacher is just a great place for finding Entitled Mothers like this, and I'm sure I'll have something new next week when I see her again. Posted by user Alientine21 Titled, The City Needs to Accommodate My Kid's Sleeping Schedule I read this open letter to the city council in a local newspaper a while ago, and it made me laugh and cringe, so I thought I'd share. It was a complaint from a father of a toddler girl. The gist of the letter was that, when the garbage truck drove by his house in the morning, it woke up his daughter at seven and she would be fussy. This was a huge problem, because she actually didn't need to get up before eight, and now he had to get up an hour early to get himself ready before his kid woke up. His suggestion was that the city council invested in getting some city planners to redraw the route that the garbage truck drove, so that it would hit his house at a later point than it did right now, so that it would match with his daughter's sleeping pattern. And the best part? You know how often the garbage truck drove past his house? Every other Tuesday. Okay, and I think that's where we're going to end today's episode, guys. As always, I do hope you enjoyed it, and maybe even learned something from these stories. Just want to say a quick shout out to my Patreon subscribers and my channel members. You guys should be on the screen right now. If you do see yourself, I want you to give yourself a little pat on the back for being amazing, and supporting me on this channel, this uh, little journey we're going on on the YouTubes. 
I really appreciate it, and you guys enable me to do all this amazing work. So if uh, you do see yourself, I love your face and I'm happy to see you. Also guys, if you want to pitch in your own support, you don't have to, but channel links are down in the description below to support the Patreon, the channel membership, whatever you want to do. It's kind of like tipping me if you feel like I'm doing a good job on this channel. I will be opening up avenues for content on those in the future. Just right now I'm kind of bogged down and stuck in Ireland, but you know. It is what it is. Anyway guys, with that said, I do hope you have a wonderful day today. Whatever you're up to, I'd love to know down in the comments below. I do hope you have a good day, night, sleep. Whatever you're up to today, tell me, and I'll see you in the next episode, guys. Bye.